next free video tutorial here on how to answer interview questions about how various changes on the three financial statements are reflected and what different line items change each time. Now you can see our normal three statement interview question model here that lets you modify different line items such as revenue, expenses, some of the balance sheet line items, some of the cash flow statement line items. And there's a link right below this video so you can actually go and just grab this file for yourself. But what we're going to focus on this time around is how changes in accounts receivable, which I have abbreviated to AR right here, how changes in accounts receivable affect the three financial statements. You can see the URL for this file right here at the top of the screen or just click on the link right below the video and you can get this in practice with this yourself. So this question, how changes in AR affect the three statements, it is a very real world scenario because companies are doing this all the time. So when you go and buy a product, for example, and you do not pay in cash, they don't receive it immediately in cash, but instead you either get it and then you pay later or perhaps you pay on credit or something like that. Well, that is exactly, this is exactly what happens at companies. They have to record something for accounts receivable when they don't receive the payment from you in cash right away. So it's a very real world scenario, unlike some of the other more artificial questions. So something like depreciation going up or down by 100 or 10 or whatever, that is somewhat more artificial, but this is a very real world scenario. And it's a very common question in interviews because they want to test if you understand the difference between recording actual profits received in cash versus what GAAP or IFRS or other accounting standards, the accounting framework tells you to actually record on the basis of accrual accounting. So first, let's just quickly review what exactly is accounts receivable. And you can see it up here on our balance sheet. This is from before any changes take place. And this is after any changes take place over here on the right side. So accounts receivable right here, it is a current asset on the balance sheet. What does it actually mean? Well, it is for scenarios when you have recorded revenue from customers, but you have not actually received the cash payment from them yet. So it's almost as if they've sent you an IOU and said, you know what, we'll take your product or service and we'll take advantage of it right now, but we're going to pay you later. So maybe we paid you on credit and you'll get the actual cash payment later, or maybe you've sent us the product or service and after we receive it is when we'll be actually remitting payment to you. So they've sent the invoice, delivered the product, but they're still waiting on the payment from a customer. Now, the standards and how you recognize revenue from this differs a little bit by industry and by company, but this is the basic idea. The most important point to note here is that if you have a scenario where you're recording something for accounts receivable or it's going up, as we are discussing it here, then revenue also has to go up. Because if accounts receivable goes up, it means that you are actually recording something as revenue because it has been delivered to the customer. They've been invoiced for it. They know they have to pay for it. And now you are just waiting on the cash for that product or service from the customer. So what happens here when it changes? Well, we're going to go through two different cases. First, when accounts receivable goes up. And then second, what happens when accounts receivable goes down? So in the first case here, when AR goes up, as I say here, what happens is we're recording revenue and profit, but we haven't received any cash yet. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but in this case, cash is actually going to go down. And we'll see why as we go through this. I have the intuition described right here that essentially it's an issue of paying taxes on profit that we haven't actually received in cash yet. But let's go up to our three statements and trace through this and see what happens on the income statement, on the balance sheet, and over here on the cash flow statement. So let's go up here and I'm going to say accounts receivable increases by 100 at first. And notice here how I've separated these out, the increases by and decreases by, because the accounting treatment is different depending on whether accounts receivable is going up or going down. Because this one corresponds to recording revenue but not receiving it. And then this one corresponds to just the collection part, just collecting cash from customers. So if AR increases by 100, let's go through and see what happens here. So you can see highlighted in red all the changes. Revenue goes up by 100, gross profit goes up by 100, and our operating income ultimately goes up by 100 as well, as does our pre-tax income. Now at a 40% tax rate, what that means is our taxes are gonna go up by 40 because pre-tax income was up by 100. And our net income at the bottom ultimately goes up by 60 because 100 times one minus 40% is an increase of 60 to our net income. So Bottom line is since we've delivered it to the customer, according to accounting standards, we have to recognize this as revenue, which flows through all the way to the bottom in the form of increased net income on the income statement. So now let's go to the cash flow statement and see what happens there. I always recommend going in this order in interviews because 
if you finish off with the balance sheet, you can check yourself and verify that it still balances. Whereas if you do this second, it's going to be much harder to verify that. So this is the order I always recommend going in. Now on the cash flow statement, net income is up by 60. But remember, we have to adjust because accounts receivable has gone up. We haven't actually gotten that 100 in cash yet. So here we're making this adjustment. And we're saying, hey, look at this. Our revenue, we said it went up by 100, but this was actually a non-cash increase in our revenue because we haven't collected this in cash from customers. So instead, what we're going to do is make this go down by 100 here to reflect the fact that actually our cash from this entire thing is going to be going down because we didn't get this 100 in cash from the customer. So no other changes in investing or financing activities because those are not impacted by this. But at the bottom, we can see that our cash here has gone down by 40 and our increase or decrease in cash, this is down by 40 as well. So now what happens on the balance sheet? Well, here, our cash is down by 40. Our accounts receivable is up by 100 because that is increased since we haven't gotten that portion in cash yet. And so ultimately, our total assets here have gone up by 60. On the other side of the balance sheet, our retained earnings is up by 60 because our net income over here was up by 60. Net income, of course, flows directly into retained earnings on the balance sheet. And so this side, the liabilities and equity side, is also up by 60, and our balance sheet balances. So that's what happens here. Now, you might still be wondering to yourself, okay, well, I get the part of how accounts receivable can go up. That makes sense. And I get the part about how retained earnings can go, can go up because net income is increased. But what's the deal with cash and cash equivalents? How can that actually go down in this scenario? And it's really what I said before. Why is it down by 40? Well, it's down by 40 because you're paying 40 extra in taxes now, except you haven't received this 100 in revenue yet. So the fact that cash and cash equivalents has gone down by 40 means that you're paying those cash taxes. You're paying 40 extra in real cash taxes, but you haven't gotten the 100 in revenue that you recorded. And so the cash is down by 40 because of those extra taxes that you've paid on revenue that is non-cash so far. So that's the intuition for this. Now let's look at the second scenario. What happens when AR goes down after you've collected the cash. And I have some of the explanation here that there are no changes on the income statement, but cash now has to increase to reflect that collection. AR will decrease because now you've collected it. And then the other side still balances via retained earnings. So let's go up here and break down the scenario. So I'm going to keep this AR increases by, and now I'm just going to say AR decreases by. So we've sent the customer the product or service, and now we're going to collect the cash from them that they owe us. So let's go down the statements. So in the income statement, nothing actually changes. So when you have this scenario where you record AR and then you go in and actually collect it, nothing here changes. Revenue stays the same as what we had before and income taxes, net income, all that, it really stays the same as what we had recorded previously. So let's go to the cash flow statement now and see what happens here. So at first glance, it seems like nothing here has changed, but actually something here has changed, which is that we don't make an adjusting entry for accounts receivable anymore, the change in accounts receivable. Why is that? Well, because now that we've actually collected this in cash, the change here is not going to affect our cash balance because now we have it. So now all that really happens here is that it's as if revenue has just gone up by 100 and it's been cash revenue the whole time. And so as a result, our net income here is up by 60, cash flow from operations up by 60, and then at the very bottom, our cash has also gone up by 60. Why? Because this time around, we've recorded this increase of 100 in revenue, except now this net income, this is a real increase. This is now a real cash increase, so we don't have to make an adjusting entry on the cash flow statement. So now on the balance sheet, what happens? Well, our cash is up by 60 because now this is a real gain. Our cash is really increased by this much because we've collected that cash and we've paid taxes on it. But overall, we've collected 100 in cash and we've paid taxes of 40, so cash has gone up by 60 here. And then on the other side, Retained earnings still up by 60 because our net income, of course, is still up by 60. And of course, our balance sheet now balances. It did also balance before, but it still balances is really what I meant there. So that's what happens when you increase AR, meaning that you record revenue and you still have to collect cash from customers. And then that's what happens when AR then decreases after you've done the first scenario. You've sh shipped a product or service to a customer you are still waiting on them and then finally you collect it from them or they send in the cash payment and now AR goes down and you can see here the intuition behind this. So that's what happens when AR changes on the three financial statements. To sum up what we covered, very important question because it's a very real world scenario and it's a very common question in interviews to test your knowledge of accounting and accrual accounting versus cash accounting and how those differ. Accounts receivable is just an account on the balance sheet for 
cash that you still need to collect for customers, but which you have already recorded as revenue, you're still waiting on cash payment from them. When it goes up, what happens is revenue goes up, pre-tax income goes up, net income also goes up, but on the cash flow statement, you haven't received it in cash yet, you have paid the taxes though, and so there you need to make an adjusting entry, and what ends up happening is that cash actually goes down at first, AR goes up, and retained earnings on the other side goes up, and then when you finally collect it, income statement stays the same, but now you don't make an adjusting entry in the cash flow statement, and now on the balance sheet, all that happens is cash goes up, and then retained earnings goes up, as we've shown right here with the cash increase and then retained earnings down here. So that's it for this lesson. Hopefully you learned some more or reviewed this concept if you already know about accounts receivable and how it works on the three financial statements.